Which injection is more risky for your patients? A vertical injection crossing at right angle to the vermilion border or a horizontal injection in parallel with that structure? This issue divides our industry. My audience on Facebook and Instagram are also divided down the middle about which one is safer. So how do we tackle this? I see this divided into two factors and really one governing principle. Factor one is what is the likely anatomy of the labial artery in the average patient? And factor two is what is the precise nature of the injections we are comparing? We need to be very precise with this. The core principle here is that the riskiest injection is likely to be the one where the injecting needle is likely to deposit the most amount of product nearest the likely position of the artery. But I'm not really talking about where it could be. I'm trying to think about where it's likely to be in every in every situation. And you can think about the artery a little bit like having, it's a bit like clouds of electrons. I remember learning in physics that there's a, a, a probability cloud of where an electron will be in a nucleus. It's just like that with artery. There's a probability cloud. And we're trying to think about where the probability is and then inject according to that. So where is the likely position of the superior labial artery. Now the artery usually runs above or within the vermilion border. The papers that I've reviewed have described it routinely in the vermilion border or slightly above. It's usually also beneath orbicularis oris, sometimes within orbicularis oris, and occasionally on top of orbicularis oris. In fact, the ratios are about 60% of the time beneath orbicularis oris, about 35% within orbicularis oris and 5% above. And that could actually even be in the same patient because it probably wiggles around a little bit. And of course, there are anomalous versions of this artery. In fact, when I was discussing this with Julie Horn recently, she's kindly shared an amazing video of a, an artery pulsating near the wet dry border. Now I've looked into this and actually this is a known anomaly. Back in the 70s, people had discovered this and it's called a caliber persistent artery but it is an anomaly. The normal position of the artery, I don't believe, is at the wet dry border, but it can be. And this is the what we all face as each time we inject. There are variations, but we're once again talking about the average position of the artery. So look now at this cross section of a lip. This is the most important bit of anatomy that you will see. This is a histological specimen cut directly long ways across the lip, and you can see where the artery tends to lie. We have the muscle that runs down the middle of the lip, Anterior to that, a little bit of hypodermic fats and then the dermis. And on the other side, you have underneath the, the muscle is where the artery usually is. As we've said, it's not always at that exact point, but it's usually just inferior to orbicularis oris. Now, if you picture where your injection is, it's on that anterior surface in most cases. Whether you're horizontal or vertical, it's, it's in, it should be on the anterior aspect of the lip. So now we need to think about the technique that we're comparing. Now, once again, remember, I'm comparing like for like in as many different ways as I can keep things consistent. Both entry points are on the same. That's in the pink part of the lip. This is very important because I think there's a technique which is sometimes thrown into the mix, which confuses the horizontal versus vertical. So I'm picturing entering on the pink side of the lip in both instances at exactly the same point because if you change the entry point everything changes um, there is a brutal technique where people used to go through the, the white lip multiple times right through where the artery is and i think this is behind why a lot of people really don't like vertical injections but it's actually not the way many injectors are injecting these days i know having confirmed this with julie horn that her technique as most of the ones i've seen in recent times are through the pink part of the lip which does change things completely in my mind so when I picture a vertical injection, this is the vision in my head. We're entering the pink lip, we're skirting superficially, it is a superficial injection. We're avoiding the deeper part of the lip envelope because we're trying to rotate the lip up slightly for most of those injections. And we're progressively moving away from the most likely position of the artery. If you consider the most likely position is just behind orbicularis oris, we would start out parallel with it and the needle as it goes deeper in should be moving slightly further away. Now horizontal injections are the same, but we'd be running right over and adjacent to the artery. And we'd be staying in that plane the entire journey of the needle. And if you're superficial, you should still be away from it, but it's technically more likely with an anomalous type of anatomy to clip a little loop of that artery. Now with, this is the issue with normal variation in a young client, I cannot see how a horizontal injection would be less likely to catch the artery than a vertical injection because most of the time we'd be away from it. So here's a little thought experiment to make it even clearer in your mind about what is more likely to cannulate the artery. If instead of avoiding cannulating the artery, we were to actually purposely try and cannulate the artery, how would you do it? I know how I would do it. I would enter 
parallel with the artery because we know the artery runs from lateral to medial. It's coming off the facial artery across the top of the lip. That's the angle my needle would enter. And then I would also be deep underneath orbicularis oris. And I would poke around parallel to the artery until I got a flashback. And I, I think you'd eventually get it if you did it that way. I don't think it would make any sense to enter vertically because that would decrease the chance that you're going to get the needle into the, into the actual lumen. And this is certainly how I understand it at the moment. There would still be a chance that you could do it, but it doesn't make sense to me that it would be higher than being parallel with it. But here's the bit that changed for me when I was looking into all of this. I was thinking about some of the studies that we have, cadaver studies in particular, and think about how lips change over time. So older people tend to have much smaller lips. In fact, it's one of the reasons why people have their lips done is because with age, they will involute and you can almost lose your lip entirely as you get atrophy of the, the vermilion part of the lip. Now, this changes everything because if you picture trying to do a vertical injection on someone with very small lips or with atrophied lips, you are naturally heading towards the space in the retroorbicularis oris, and that's where the artery is. So there are actually circumstances where if you apply vertical, that you're actually going to be getting closer to the artery in some people. Now, I don't think it's the obvious injection to do in those cases. For me, that's not how I would inject that type of lip. But remember, this isn't about how I inject, it's about understanding the anatomy in different circumstances. So my mental lump model has been improved by thinking about this because I've realized that if you treat someone with very small lips, you are necessarily forced to aim closer to the space where the artery is. And the smaller and the more involuted, the more risky that would be. So this means there are certain circumstances where the claim that the vertical injection is more risky might actually be true. Now, it's not actually a time when I think you will actually intuitively use that style of injection. I'm sure there are some people out there who would. But mostly when you see these vertical injections, they are actually on already slightly fuller lips, trying to get a little bit of elevation. Um, not so much for restoration. Now, I'm sure some people do, but that's not when I would use it. But I do believe that's a circumstance where a vertical injection might be riskier. That's very useful because now I have an additional level of nuance and understanding to my anatomy because the anatomy changes and the risk profile of different injections might change as volume is lost. I actually think this is true all over the face because if you think about it, arteries will take up a relatively bigger percentage of the space in the face as volume decreases because I don't think your artery shrinks as much as your fat pads. So it's an interesting way of thinking about risk. That's the thing I've got most out of this exercise is realizing that in certain circumstances, the risk profile might be different for the same injection. So what do you think? Has that improved your mental model at all? Have I got it in a way that contradicts your mental model? I'd love to hear in the comments down below, but most of all, I'd love to hear, are you a horizontal injector or a vertical injector? Let us know in the comments down below.